Well, the X-Men are back, and they are better than ever, said nobody. Man. You know, I, I really don't even know how to approach this review without maintaining my composure, because I hated this movie. I really did. So, let me just try and stay a little bit sane and get through this. Um, Fox's X-Men have returned after having its release date postponed twice, and we finally get to see a second attempt at the infamous and incredible Dark Phoenix storyline from the comics. Did they stick the landing on the second go-around? No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I think X-Men The Last Stand did a better job than this movie did. Yeah, I know that's surprising to say. Uh, sure, The Last Stand sucked, man, but at least they had a coherent story, you know, driving the film. It just, this this movie just drags and it has no real purpose. It's, uh, it's lazy, it lacks solid direction, it's horribly written, and, you know, quite frankly, it's kind of an insult to all the actors, you know. And they all tried their hardest, but it just didn't work. Uh, my biggest question is, how the hell did Simon Kinberg get the directing job? Uh, where was Brian Singer? Where was Matthew Vaughn? I mean, with a storyline this complex, this movie really needed a polished veteran director who could develop the story properly and, you know, kind of meticulously craft the essence of Jean Grey's complex saga. Because this is a big storyline in the comics, man. You know, and I, I'll never understand why Fox let Kinberg take a stab at it. You don't give a first-time director a job like this, you know, that's like McDonald's suddenly promoting a fry cook to regional manager, you know, with no background or no experience. I mean, sure, dude, Kinberg's a solid writer, man, and I really, I really mean no disrespect towards him, but man, this movie just lacked the direction and writing that it desperately needed. Let's talk characters real quick, man. You know, we'll start with the villain. This chick was so bland, I immediately forgot about her as soon as I left the screening. So forgettable. Uh, I think the movie should have done a better job on developing Jean Grey to be the true villain, the only villain, you know, and leading up to a final tragic climax. I think that would have been a lot better. Uh, the whole alien subplot wanting to use her powers was so overplayed, and it was just ridiculous, man. It really was. As far as the others, all of our favorite X-Men return as well, including Quicksilver, who was once again shafted early on, but, you know, hey, we're kind of used to it now, so no surprise there. Um, speaking of Jean Grey, I, I think Sophie Turner did a really decent job with what she was given. You know, sure, the writing sucked, but you can tell that Sophie wanted to at least try and put on some type of performance. Same goes for James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. You know, they're always great, but yeah, that's about it with this, man. Uh, but look, overall, I'm, I'm glad to see Fox close out their X-Men saga so we can let the X-Men rest for a few years. Fox did give us some great entries, you know, Logan... Days of Future Past, First Class, X1, X2, but for the most part, it's it's been a pretty messy ride, but um, hey, looking ahead, I'm so pumped, and I'm very elated to see the X-Men make their debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in just a few years' time. You know, I, I really hope that Kevin Feige and the MCU team will do the X-Men justice, because they desperately need it. But until then, save your money on Dark Phoenix, and just wait for wait for this damn thing on streaming devices. It's, it's pretty bad. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 star and I'm going to grab my shovel so we can finally bury this fucking franchise. We're out of here. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at The Indie Rundown and like our Facebook page, The Indie Rundown Podcast.